Hello, I'm going to show you how to interface with the um, Windows Media Player Control you can find in Visual Studio. So I'm going to create a new project. And we're going to right click on the toolbox here. Hit Choose Items. And in the COM components, we're going to scroll down to the bottom, check Windows Media Player, and then hit OK. And then at the bottom of all of your controls, you've got your Windows Media Player. So I'm going to add it in there and I'm going to rename it to Media Player. And I'm going to dock it, well, anchor it everywhere. Okay, let's um, add some buttons. So we're going to add a stop button. and the start button. Whoops. Okay, I have both my form and my button selected there. That was messed up. Okay, this is my start button. And we're gonna add a um, full screen button. full screen and we're going to anchor these actually I'm going to add a label and a text or a button sorry so that we can change the URL property of the media player so label I don't know path and we'll anchor it Set its auto size property to false, border style fixed single, uh, text align, middle, and default text will be select a file. I don't think I should capitalize A. Okay. And is that properly anchored? Yeah. And then we're going to add another button at the end of this label and it's going to be where we actually pick our file we're going to anchor this Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to load a file into our media player control. And uh, before we get started, I must say that this media player control is very poorly abstracted, even for a COM component. It's just really messy and gross. So, uh, you may, just a heads up, really. All right, so we are going to create an open file dialog. And I'm going to wrap that in a using statement. And we're going to change the filter to everything. And we're going to show the dialog. Okay, and here's where we can set the URL. And I'm going to wrap that in a try catch. And let's set our stop button. So we're going to simply say media player controls stop. 
and our start button. Media player, controls, start, or play. And our full screen button. We need to check to see if there's any media to play because if you try to enter full screen and there's no media, you'll get an error. Media player URL dot length is greater than zero. Media player full screen is equal to true. And that's it. So I'm going to uh, copy a file off my desktop into my debug directory so I can use it easily. And I'm going to restart this. I'm going to select my file, projects, Windows Forms Application 1, debug. And I need to save this, sorry. This isn't even saved. Okay, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to copy my file, go into my debug directory, paste it there. It's already there. Okay. So I'm going to click on the MP3 here, and it's going to start playing. And I can't really hear it because my headset's broken, but it is playing. And I may want to anchor these buttons here. And I may also want to set the label of this, whatchamacallit, path, DLG open file file name, and decrease its font size so you can see most of the file path. Okay, let's open up that file again. There it is. Let's hit the uh, full screen button and you'll go into full screen and we can stop it, start it, and the pause function and CLT controls is similar to these ones here. You can change up the um, GUI here by specifying a certain property, media player, um, let me find it first. UI mode, I, I do believe that's it. And that is a string, unfortunately, so you're going to have to either use none or mini or invisible. And uh, I think full would be the default. We're going to do none because we don't want to have the default controls and our controls visible. That'd be weird. So you start up and it's gone. Now we're going to implement uh, repeat or looping functionality to uh, demonstrate the, the play state enumeration that you would often use. Let's go find an event in their media player. And we're going to go down to the play state changed event and hook to that. And we're going to check to see if the media player play state is equal to stopped. And if it is, then we are going to play once more. CTL. It's actually going to play more than once. So I'm going to open up my file. And I disabled my control so I can't really fast forward. So I'm going to do that. I actually didn't disable them, I just hid them. There is an option to disable the controls themselves. They'll stay visible and you can still interface with them using their methods. So I'm just going to bring this to the end of the file so, here. Let me know for the, or whatever you think. So, thanks so much guys and you're awesome. And it's going to start up again. So the play state enumeration is what you're going to want to analyze a lot. So you've got ready. So before it's playing, before it has any media loaded, I suppose. Then playing, pause, media ended, last buffering. Some uh, useful stuff in there.
let's uh, find something else to mess around with, really. So if you register to the key down event on this and it's active X parent, you won't be able to pick up on any events unless the the um, controls are the controls have focus, and you actually have to click on like a trackbar or something in the control. Um, it doesn't. It's not very effective, really. It's really. I haven't even figured out a way to handle a, a key down event for all of the controls, even if you set. Uh, if you handle key down on the form and set key preview to true, if you have it in full screen, it's not going to register. So we're going to try to show this property page here. And we're not going to pass in anything, see if it actually does something. Look at that. Just some random property page. Cool. Let's look at this settings property here. Well, you've got the uh, auto start property, so let's set that to false. And we're going to load our path into there. And it's ready, but it's not going to automatically start. Let's take a look at some more. Balance, this probably has, has something to do with sound. Mute. You can mute this, I, spe I suppose. Yeah, it starts up muted. And we're going to change the rate to 2, so it'll play twice as fast, I do, I do believe. Couldn't tell you for sure, because I can't hear it. Then you got volume. So remember that this control is built for playing mp3s and videos and stuff. If you want to play waves, you should probably just use the sound player object. Um, you may want to look around for some wrappers for this control as well. Uh, I'm sure there's some nice wrappers out here because this is a pretty ugly uh, control. That's all I have to say about it. See you later.